Welcome to number three. I have some vintage little pie, whatever these are, jello molds, a little tree. I've got some paint and a brush. I've got some salt and magic snow mix, some tinsel, some wraps, a snowflake, a little piece of the fabric cotton, and then some pom-poms, and I'm also going to use some table scatter like we had before. I'm going to start off by emptying this into a pan and getting my paint and I'm going to take this stiff brush, it's like a stencil brush, and I'm going to put this all down over the branches of this tree. Doing it with this type of brush is going to, the little needles from the tree poke straight up into there and you get a lot better coverage. You're going to save yourself a ton of time, plus you get all the way down to the base of the tree. While it is still wet, you want to take your whatever you want to use. If you want to use just faux snow, you can do that, but I like to mix part salt and part um, faux snow together to get this look. Plus it gives it a little sparkle. And then there you go. After it dries, you're going to spray a little clear Mod Podge on it, and that's going to help keep it from falling off. Let it dry. Now we're going to stack these two, make a little stand, or a little base. I have some more that are smaller, and I, for the love of, I don't know, I can't find them. I don't know where they're at. Probably in the Valentine stuff, because I do a lot of Victorian at Valentine's. All right, while the glue is still wet here, I'm going to take some of that same mixture and go around the joint in the middle. Just like that. Why, you may ask, because in the beginning, I thought I was going to leave it that way, but I do change it. So I'm going to take some of this fabric, snow, whatever this stuff is, batting. You can use pillow fluff. You can use whatever you want. And I'm going to stick it down into here. I'm going to use some hot glue and then press it down so that it is pretty much level with the top. Then I'm going to be sure you're in a ventilated area when you do this now. I have the door open and a fan on. Don't worry. And you're just going to pack this onto here. It's going to be like an adhesive. It's a sealer, but it's also an adhesive. And it works really well for this because the hot glue is not going to give you even coverage. You'll have little streaks and roads. And this will give you a nice the ability to make an even coverage. So give that a minute, let it dry, and then I'm going to add a little border around the top. So I'm using this silver tinsel, which I guess I could have used the silver tinsel around that Santa Claus ornament too. Hindsight, right? Okay, so I'm making a little border on the top. Just tack it down with a little bit of hot glue, a couple of spots all the way around it, and it'll stay. And see, I just add a little and then just press it down. And there you go. So now we got to put the tree down in the base. We're going to decorate it first, apparently. We're going to take some white pom-poms. And this is from a bag I think I got at Dollar Tree. I think is what it said. And I'm just going to add some white, the smallest ones, straight into the tree. They will stay if you just poke them in there. Just like that. You can leave it like that if you would like and just have the white, or because it's Victorian, I'm going to add a little something to it. Let's go ahead and secure the tree down into the base. So I'm just making a little hole, like a little nest right there with my fingers so that I can put the tree right down in it. I left the base on the tree because that's going to help it be a little more stable down in that snow. I have a stray snowball and we're going to leave it. We're going to go with it. So in order to not burn myself, I'm using my tiny jewelry pliers. I'm going to put my little silver scatter here, put a drop of hot glue on it, and just press it into the tree here and there all over. When you're finished, this is the look. Now I'm just going to add a, the bigger, a few of the little bigger snowball looking things in the bottom, the little pom-poms. And so far, this is what we have. But you know, with these types of decorations, you're going to have to add a little bit more. Like I said, when you think you've gone far enough, add in a little bit more. So I'm going to add this around the middle because I want to add the star, and that star would not have stuck on there without it. So that's why I wrapped it in the middle. And this is what we have so far. And I just put a little one of those um, table scatters right in the center. All right, I'm going to show you how to make a tiny star. We're going to use a piece of this pipe cleaner. I called it tinsel, I think. And you're going to do it, you're going to bend it just like you would when you draw a star. So simple. Then I'm pinching it with my fingers until I get it in the shape that it needs to be. 
and then I'm going to put some glue on the bottom part so that the point is upward and glue it to the tree. So this one's all silver. Silver and white. We're going to start off with a variety of items. Some we may use, some we might not. Some thrifted ornaments, some from Walmart. These came from Dollar Tree. This was thrifted. And these are two hoop wreaths that I already had. They're embroidery hoops in two different sizes. And they have been wrapped with yarn, but you can use nautical rope or a thick jute type twine if you would like. And I'm just going to do a quick repair on mine where I had some loose threads, a little hot glue to put that down. These are wooden underneath. So I'm going to be attaching the smaller wreath on the inside of the larger wreath to one side and I'm going to use these zip ties to hold those together. Be sure to trim off those extra pieces, the extra length that you don't use. You don't want to get these too tight because it will start to press into your rope or your yarn that you have around there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and secure this with some more of this thrifted yarn that I have. I've had this one spool of yarn for a couple years and I've gotten so many projects out of it. I have no idea where it came from, but you can get something similar at Dollar Tree. Um, as far as rope, lengths of rope, you can go to some, like a hobby craft store or something like that to get big spools of yarn. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap down on that side to give it a nicer look and to cover up all the hardware from those wreaths, those little um, tightening screws. Now they're all covered up very neatly. So this is like a press board or I don't know if it's called MDF snowflake. And here's my son when I turned my back to get some other stuff. My son came over here and started to do a little video of his own. Thought I'd leave that in there for you to show you how I got so much help. <laughs> Thanks Noah. Okay, now Mama's back in the driver's seat. So I've taken these pics that I, I've had for a little while. I think I got these last year on clearance after Christmas at Hobby Lobby. Or they might have been thrifted. Not, can't quite remember. So I know that I want to use a semicircle of these. And this is sort of how I would like for them to lay. You can use greenery wire and go ahead and wire that down if you want to. But because that green floral wire is going to show up, I don't want that on my white wreath. I want it to be a cleaner look. So I've decided to just go ahead and use this floral tape that I have to secure these pieces together. Floral tape, if you're not familiar with it, it does not feel very sticky. It's a waxed piece and it's it doesn't really feel ticky, <laughs> sticky or tacky until you pull on it a little bit and when you start to pull and put some pressure on it, the tackiness comes in then and then you can you can feel that it is holding those items together. And you can get this in lots of different colors. I do have it in two other shades of green also. And you can also get this at Dollar Tree. But it's fairly inexpensive wherever you decide to get it. It's coming together pretty nicely here. And I had some wire showing, 
I want to cover that up by just putting a little pressure on that and twisting it to the end. Cleaned it up a bit. Now rather than using bulky zip ties here, I've decided to use some pieces of the leftover yarn that I have that I've just pulled into, into little threads, into smaller sections. And you're just going to find little places here and there that you can attach your greenery to that outer hoop. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you can also use jute cord or a thinner white yarn if you're using white, just so that it's kind of camouflaged. It's just a nicer, like I've said, you know, before, it's just a cleaner, nicer, more finished look. Snowflake fits pretty nicely here. It wouldn't go all the way down on the inside, so I've decided I'm going to use a pipe cleaner to attach it on the two sides there. I'm going to use some hot glue. piece of pipe cleaner and then a little piece of scrap paper on top of that and we'll do the same thing on this side I'm going to use a longer piece for this side so that it will wrap all the way around that thicker section there then when you twist it around it's it's barely noticeable because the color matches pretty well so now it's secured down. And I'm going to start adding my mini ornaments from Walmart. I'm putting these down to see where I would like for them to be. Then with a little hot glue, I'm just going to put it on the back of the, the sphere itself and place it down into the greenery. Now using this thrifted white ribbon, just a thin ribbon, I'm going to make little simple little shoestring bows to put on the tops of each one of those ornaments. Just going to trim those down. You can leave them as long as you want. You could use a different color. My ornaments are black and white. You could use black. You could use a tiny little checkered ribbon if you wanted, or, or you could use blue because the berries are blue. Whatever you choose is fine right here. These really simple little easy bows to make. I'm gonna add a little hot glue. Be careful on this metal piece because it can get very hot. Just tap that into place. And I'll do that for the other two as well. Alright, so I'm going to use this metal joy sign that came from Dollar Tree in a three pack. I'm going to take it outside and spray it down with this glossy black paint. And while that is drying, I'm going to start all my ribbon pieces. I'm cutting about five inch pieces here of a denim blue and this black and white. You use whatever you like here. I do recommend one print and one solid color just to keep this from being too busy because we want this to have a simple look. Now I'm dovetailing those. You can do them one at a time or you can fold them together like this. Just be sure that you've lined up your wires there so you don't have a bunch of square ends. So I'm going to pinch it in the middle. I'm going to show you this stack first. Then we pinch it in the middle. Might make it a little bit easier for you to see it like this. Or you can do one at a time and just hold them in your hand. So I'm taking another piece of that string that came from the yarn, just a little frayed pieces. And I'm going to tie a double knot here. This is some pretty sturdy yarn, but be careful depending on what kind you have, it may break. 
just going to fluff that bow out a little bit. And then we're going to work on a few other little pieces that will go inside of the greenery. We're going to pinch it in the middle and then pull it upward so that it has this shape. So you can see here, kind of keeping the bottom kind of flat and then pressing the top upward and toward the center. And this is the shape that you get. We're going to do that with the blue as well. Take a little tiny piece of a twist tie or a pipe cleaner. And that will keep that in that shape for you. If you have a stiffer um, wired ribbon, it may, it may hold its form for you better without even having to put a piece of wire or anything on it. So here we are doing the same thing with the blue. And then we're going to stack them. Like this. That's how that will look. We'll do it for the other one. I wanted to use the blue because there are blueberries. And then of course the black and white. It matches the black and white ornaments and the wreath itself. Okay, so I did not like the way that that end was looking. I'm just gonna wrap a little piece around here and you won't really be able to see it once that is done. And I put the bow on the top of it. You won't really notice it. So I've hot glued the bow down and now I'm just pulling at the bow to decide what pieces I want to go where. And this part really doesn't matter. You just do what you like the best, what makes sense to you, and what is pleasing to your eye. This is your project. We want it to be what you enjoy and what brings you joy. So those have been glued together and now we're just gonna put them down here and there on the wreath. I'm gonna take some of these mini pine cones that are frosted. They also came from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna randomly place them here and there for a more woodland look. Just fills out the wreath a little bit better. I think this would be really pretty to use all winter long if you'd like. And there is Joy all painted. I'm gonna use some Gorilla Glue. And this time on this project, I won't use quite as much glue as I used in my in my farmhouse Dollar Tree sign video. Use a little too much, but I fix it. <laughs> so this is going to be better. What brings you joy in your life? It's a good question, isn't it? work on the opposite side now and I've decided to use the other half of this bag that came from Dollar Tree. I made a big sign with the other side so now I'm going to use this piece. I just went ahead and folded it down to get an idea of where it would fit and then I am just going to cut that out. Yeah, I made a little boo-boo there with my cutting. My line is not perfectly straight. That's okay because I can trim that a little bit and fix it. And anytime you make an error when you're cutting, 
uh, you can always just use something to trim it out. I'm going to cut off that top folded area. And there we go. I think this is how I want to have it in here. I don't know why the paper was so thin on that egg, but you'll see it just kind of comes off by itself. Must have been right near that fold in the bag, the original fold. So I'm going to try to fix where I made my little boo-boo there, make it a little bit straighter. That's easy enough. It's a good fit. So I'm going to take my glue stick and put this down. I'm not using a ton of glue on here because I have found that, you know, a fairly even coverage is going to give you the hold that you need. So that's all I'm going to do here. And you can use dots of hot glue in the corners if you want to or, you know, whatever you choose to use. The quality of this paper on the, of the bag is really nice. It's uh, thicker than regular paper and little, it's thinner than cardstock though. But it's, it's good. It's easy to smooth. It's pretty easy to work with. Now I'm going to give you some options in this video. You can trim this out with some jute cord if you would like. Any type of the decorative Christmas trim or whatever color you like since this isn't necessarily screaming Christmas. It's pretty much just a winter sign. But I've chosen to use this berry garland. You can get this at Dollar Tree as well. It comes in a few pieces. I originally thought it was two pieces, but if you look closely on the end, you can actually get four shorter pieces out of this without having to cut it. They're just twisted together nicely. If you want to double it up, you don't have to untwist it. You could just go ahead and string it along and put it around your edges. So I went ahead and decided where I want my pieces to go and because it's wired you can just easily bend it before you start gluing it to most likely decrease your odds of the glue drying too quickly and of you burning yourself. So I'm going to grab my little spatula here. This came from Hobby Lobby. But you can get any type of spatula you want or you could use the glue fingertips but because this is a tight area that I'm trying to get into I think that this flat thin edge works better, you know, to place it where I want to put it. With these little pit berries, they do, they're kind of movable, so you can fix those where you're not gluing on top of them so that they're, they're um, on the outward surface where you want them to be, and that way your wire will lay flat. You can just push them around with your fingers or with your spatula, whichever way you want to do it. They also have this trim in gold and in a white color. And I think at different seasons, you know, they have a darker red and they have orange and things like that. But I hope they keep this for all the seasons because this, it really is nice. And it's easy to work with. Gives it a little extra something, especially if you're into rustic or farmhouse or a woodland theme. Just go ahead and finish trimming that out. And then if you have any glue that seeps out, you can just pull those pieces off. I'm forever pulling off glue string spider webs. And if you didn't watch the other video, which you really should, if you didn't watch that video, I got this particular sign as a fall decoration from Big Lots a few years ago. And I got it on clearance after the holidays. I didn't really care for the style of it so I went ahead and painted one side with chalkboard paint and that's the sign that's already decorated and then I took some I think it's called Navajo um, paint to put on this side. Of course I could have just not put anything on this side since I'm putting a bag on top of it. But I did because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it, but I knew that I wanted to use it. And a shout out to the maker of these bags. These designs are gorgeous. They really are just beautiful. 
These are the little sticker packs that you can get from Dollar Tree. You're just going to pull, pull the little foam sticky piece off of there and use a little hot glue. And I want to put some here in the corners. I think the snowflake is appropriate considering this is a snowy scene. And if we want this to be a winter sign, it looks nice. I've chosen to leave it the natural color that, uh, as it came rather than painting it, but you could always paint yours white if you'd like. I'm going to put a jute bow on the top of mine, so I'm taking about probably 14 inches here, and I'm going to cut four equal pieces. You can use more, you can use less, depending on the thickness of the bow that you like. Then I'm going to do a simple shoestring bow. Two rabbit ears, cross them over, and there you go. You can make the tails as long as you want, so you can go ahead and adjust your bow, the length of the ears. And that's what I'm doing here. Jude is pretty forgiving. And then just choose which which area you want to place your bow. So I could do it at the top, I could do it somewhere on the bottom. These are just options that I left in for you so you can decide how to make it your own. You could actually use a piece of garland and make a wreath if you would like. Do something like that. These are snowflake ornaments that came from Dollar Tree. I've had these for years. I usually put them in my Christmas tree. So there's a good look too. If you choose, you can embellish the center of that wreath. And I have a magnet that's gonna be perfect right there in the middle. This magnet came from Hobby Lobby, I do believe. And I'm just going to peel that off. I started to pull it off with my pliers and it broke the corner. And I realized that it could easily just be peeled off with a little force by hand. So I went ahead and pulled it off. And look at the tag for the tailgate of my beautiful little 1956 Ford. I don't really know what year it is or if it's a Ford, but that's what I'm going to call it. I was in Cracker Barrel the other day clearance shopping and I saw a model truck there that is a 1956 Ford or maybe a Chevy. I'm not sure. What do, what do you think? What is this? What is this truck? If you had to do a year in a model, what do you think? I just think it's gorgeous, whatever it is. And it's vintage looking and it is very rustic and farmhousey. All right, so we're going to have some options here for greenery. If you want to add anything to embellish the bottom, you could also just use stickers and put some words down there, or you could freehand something down there if you want to. But we're going to put something in the road behind the tree to give it a little dimension. And these little bottle brush trees you can get. I'm not sure where this one came from, but most likely the Dollar Tree. It's been in my crafting supply for a while, so I can't tell you for sure since it was out of the package, but you can definitely get them there. And this has little flecks of white in it. So I thought it was appropriate. In order to get this to lay flat against the sign, I am just taking the bristles down almost to the stem on one side. Then I'm going to add a good amount of glue there and just hold him down because the bristles have a tendency to press it back up from the surface. So just hold it there for a minute. Let it get some grip before you let go of it. And there we are. Now you can just add some bits and pieces. This is from a I think a cedar or a fern pick. I think it's cedar. And it's frosted. So I'm just going to add some of that along the bottom with some hot glue. And then I'm going to take another little piece that came off of some thrifted greenery. And it is also frosted. And decide where I want to put him. He's more like a pencil tree. I think he'll go great in this corner. And again, it tries to push away from the surface, so just be sure you secure it down before you do anything else with it. What do you think so far? It's good? Would you leave it like this? I wanted to add a little more dimension here to really make that 
a more like a 3D look. So I've decided to take some more of that jute twine that we use for our bow and a dot of glue to secure it around the corner of that. I guess you could call it a magnet. That's what it was originally, but our sign. And I'm just gonna wrap that and secure it in the corner here. And then take that around one more time. Give it a second to dry and then go ahead and clip that off. And there we go. What do you think? going to start off with this box that I already had around my house so it was free for me it's just a little wooden box it's pretty shallow I'm gonna get those measurements here for you it's more of a rectangle than a square I'm going to take a bag of your choice as long as it's going to fit in the box that you choose to use and this one came from Dollar General, I believe. I've had it for a few years in my Christmas decoration and wrapping box. I'm going to cut out the front side of this. One side of this bag is sparkly and iridescent and the other side is plain, so we're going to use the sparkly side. Just going to put my box down there and make some marks where I'm going to be cutting. Be sure that you trim that up inside of those lines so that it will fit down in your box. But don't worry if it's a little bit larger than you want because you can trim it down a little at a time until you get it the size that you want it. So I'm considering some trim here and I'm going to give you some options. This piece of beaded garland or wire came from Dollar Tree. You could use this for a more farmhouse look. This is some jute cord that came from Dollar Tree. And this is some decorative ribbon or cording that came from the Christmas section of Dollar Tree. This, I think, gives it a, a nice vintage look. Now you're going to use a couple of dots of hot glue to put down your bag inside of the box if you want to use it again. Or for something more permanent, you could use a glue stick or some Mod Podge. Just pressing that down to make sure it stays in and that there are no lumps and bumps under there. I've got my handy dandy finger protectors on and I'm going to run a bead of hot glue down the side there. I like my seams to be in the corners but you can put yours wherever you like and I'm going to layer this with jute on the bottom and then I'm going to use some of that sparkly cord on the top because I like the kind of a frosty or icicle look that it's going to give this piece reminds me of some old-fashioned Christmas decorations with the tinsel and the garland so just continue along. You want to focus your glue line right in the corner so that you can snug that piece of jute right into the corner because we're going to put another piece on top. This cord is thicker than the jute and it's going to sit sort of on top of that. So we're going to use the same process. I'm going to start on the bottom, but this time in the other corner so it doesn't get too bulky. I'm going to run some glue down there. And press it against the box and the other piece of cord. You know, if you wanted to, you could probably use like a decorative box top and make a piece of decor out of that. This is just what I had and it's really thin, it's very, very lightweight box. And this way I get two uses out of it because I can use the top of the box for 
another sign later on. Just to give it a little extra sparkle, I've decided to run this along the inside border too. Gives it a finished look. I've done this before with jute, but I'm going to do it with this decorative cord this time. You can just take your little spatula or stick, whatever you have, and just press it into the side and into the corners. Try to get that glue as close as you can to the corner so you don't make a mess. It's just going to give you a nice, it's going to give you a nice clean look. Dollar Tree also has some that I think it's like a red and green and gold cord. I have some of that too, but it didn't match with this particular piece. Once you get it close to the corner, go ahead and trim it. You don't have to trim it completely short. You just go back in there and fix whatever's left that needs to be re removed. And glue that down, just like that. This little spatula came from a set that I got at Hobby Lobby this fall. And I have some Jingle Bells that were already in my stash from a few years. They were actually not in my crafting uh, supplies, they were with my Christmas decor. I'm going to use a piece of this jute and just push it through the ends and put three bells together. If your jute is coming unwound, you can use a little candle wax on it or a little bit of hot glue to dab on the end and twist it to make it into a little point so that you can thread it. You could also use a piece of clear tape. I'm going to just tie a couple of knots in there to secure it. And now I'm going to work on a stand. Now this is square and it would stand by itself, but it's so lightweight that any type of wind or vibrations will probably knock it over. And I have a house that is raised. It's not on concrete. So walking around on the floor can knock this over. So I've decided to take these little wood blocks that came from the crafter section in Dollar Tree and make a little stand for the box. It gives it a little extra support so it's not easily knocked over. You could probably use those little Jenga type building blocks if you wanted. Okay, so since I've already got the stand on here, I went ahead and propped this up on a roll of ribbon just to give it a little support while I work. A couple of more knots to give it more surface there. And I went ahead and trimmed that off. Now I'm gonna make some bows to go in the corner because you will see these cute little bows on a lot of the old Christmas decorations and I wanted to give it some more sparkle so just a real easy bow that I made there and I'm trying to get an idea of where I might want to place my jingle bells so here are a few options for you you could also take some of those little bottle brush trees if you wanted to like in white and put those there on the base that would be super cute with this I think so one more bow and I'm gonna use the jute for this I'm gonna put it underneath and then pull those ears out so that they're the same size and I like the look of that layered bow little glue in the corner is going to hold that down just hold it for a moment until it's stable then I'm gonna put my bells in the corner so we we'll put the hot glue on there and just press it up into the corner and hold it for just a minute. And I have my cute little jingle bell sign. You can top this off with some of these metal signs from Dollar Tree. They come in these three packs. I think it's peace, joy, and something else. So that just will give you an idea of how something like that would look. But I think I'm going to leave it like this. I like that it's a little on the simpler side and it's somewhere between maybe a vintage look and a farmhouse look. Also maybe a little rustic and possibly glam since it's sparkly. I think it would work in a lot of different types of decor. What do you think?
can see the iridescence there and it just looks like pretty snow and I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you come back to see me. If you're not subscribed, I hope you hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you've been enjoying these Christmas videos. We're going to start off with some deco mesh. We're going to be using a little brush and some white chalk paint. I have a little sign here that matches the colors I'll be using. I have a snowflake. You can pretty much get these anywhere this time of year. And I have some little wood ornaments that we're going to be painting. I think one came from a craft store and the other one came from Dollar Tree. And then two Dollar Tree white Christmas trees. I'm repurposing those from a swag last year. Some zip ties. And some frosted looking picks. They actually look like they have bits of snow on them. Or ice. Okay, so you can do your swag either way. But for this purpose, I'm going to use like a... I think you would call it a teardrop shape. So we're just going to kind of overlap these to make it a little bit longer, a little bit thicker. But we're going to leave one, the one is going to be a couple of inches taller than the other one. So you're just going to put one several inches down lower. And then connect them with the tie right around that inner piece. And then fluff these pieces out and I'm going to get these out of the way so I can put one more tie in there. If you don't, it's going to move around because you can see, see there when I pull them to fluff them out, they just keep trying to move away from each other. So fluff all the pieces out to the sides. We're going to be using these for our deco mesh to hold them in place. Alright, so I think this is a good spot for another tie close to the bottom, but in a place that of course will be hidden when we put every everything that we have on top of it. And then I'll just use my cutters here and just trim off those extra pieces and throw those in the trash. I know one thing for sure when you're working with this type of stuff it tends to grab on everything these and deco mesh and these little branches um, they just catch on to everything like velcro and they go all over the place you move one piece and everything's moving so you just want to make sure that these are all pulled out straight pine branches are straight so let's pull these all out straight and this will also help us when we're getting ready to place down our deco mesh bundles we can see exactly where we need to put them And then the tip ends a little bit longer. We're going to be putting something down there later. If you would like to show me some love, it's not required, but always appreciated. You can find the link to buy me a coffee in the description box below. Okay, so I went and added some of this white mesh. And it has like a silver running through it. We're going to take our gray mesh first. And this is shorter, a shorter mesh than the other. I think this is a inches and the white one is 10 inches I believe but you just need two different sizes to get this effect so I'm going to be using to start the bundle two gray and then two white and I'm just cutting that frayed edge off to give me a nice clean edge and then go up to the 10 and then just cut that off and then this is what the bundles will look like when they're done pretty much be sure you got some clips that you can hold your little bundles together. And I'll show you how we're going to put those together. You're going to take the gray, roll it over about three times, clamp it off, go to the other side, roll it over a couple of times, and then walk the center in. These are called cruffles. The rolled edges are going to be under, just the way I like to do it. I know some people put the rolled part on top you can do it whichever way you like best then we're gonna go next to the white piece same process here roll it under that catches all those loose ends so you don't have any frayed bits sticking out of your pretty little bundle and we're just gonna scoot them up close side by side and clamp them together 
there will be a gray, a white, and then another gray. Same process. Folding over, walking them together. Okay, and you know here, you can just see I easily flip it over and add it to the bundle. And this keeps everything with the rolled edges on the underside. And that's how I like mine. And they look like this. Really cute. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Alright, so we're going to start cutting down the picks. I'm going to cut off these pieces. See, it looks like little ice or something on there. In the south, we call that sleet. It's like a mix of snowy rain. I'm going to cut that off, and then I'm looking for the pieces on my pick that have the most of those little icy pieces on them, because we're going to use those pieces. Alright, now we're going to start at the top. There's no rhyme or reason to this pattern. I just know that since it's a teardrop shape, I want the biggest, widest part of this on the top. So you can see I just placed it down and twisted the branches around it. Gonna go up here, down just a tad, but beside it, right across from it. I'm trying to decide here. Okay, so I'm gonna take that little stack, place it down inside of there and then hold it tightly and twist the branches around just a little bit. It's going to hold it in place. So this is going to be the widest part of the swag. That's going to be the top. It has the longest branches and it's going to have the widest deco mesh bundle parts. So now we're just going to start angling downward and go back and forth. Now we have five bundles with two gray and one white. So you're going to need to have 10 gray pieces cut and you're going to need five white pieces cut to make each of those bundles. I like to do mine ahead of time so then the assembly is a lot quicker. So you see I went to the right and now I'm going down and to the left. Twist it around just like that. And I've decided not to add any additional ribbon on this wreath. I, well, on the swag, I didn't think that it was necessary for the look that I was going for. And I do know a lot of people just don't care about the bows. They just are not big bow people. So, you know, this may be just the thing for you. Plus, the snowflake is going to light up, y'all. Come on, does it get any better than that? Okay, so you can see here, I tried to get the widest part on the top there, and then it goes a little bit lower down, and you can accomplish that look just by moving around your pieces of deco mesh and your, your branches just a little bit. Look at here. Look who's making an appearance. Oh, the Grinch. Yes. You're going to be seeing the Grinch and his progress throughout this video. My daughter was helping. She was doing her own thing in the basement, her and my son, while I was doing my crafting. They're little crafters too. Okay, so now I'm going to use about eight inches here of this jute cord so that I can put a hanger on the back. It's really tight between those two. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm pulling it down and then adding some glue right under it next to that metal piece. And then I'm just tying a little knot here so that we have a loop in the end so that it can be hung, just like that. Okay, now here is a cork light set, but you can get any type of little really thin line lights like this at Dollar Tree or pretty much anywhere. Okay, here's the Grinch before he had his makeover. This is how he looked originally. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the hanger out of my snowflake because I don't need it. I'm going to add some spackle in there. <gasps> the Grinch is back. All right, and then I'm just going to go around. After my spackle is dry, I'm going to just go around and figure out how I want this wire to be attached. And you can see you can bend it. I wanted to make sure I had enough. So I just bend it around, use a little bit of tape to make sure that it was gonna fit nicely on my snowflake. Then I'm gonna add dots of glue and just use a little stick. It's like a coffee stir or something. I had a big pack from the thrift store. Um, 
and I like to use it for these types of projects just to hold things in place and to keep me from burning my fingers. This is on my cool temperature on my glue gun. Now to attach the little light switch on the back I'm going to use some of this double stick I don't know what this is tape it came from Dollar Tree but I lost the packaging so I'm not sure what it's called. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my goodness yes. Okay so now we're going to move on to painting the rest of our snowflakes. These are the bigger ones and all of these snowflakes look different and I like that because no two snowflakes are alike. Did you know that? It's true. They're like fingerprints. They're different. So I'm going to take all the hangers off of the ones that were in that pack. I think you can get something similar to this at Walmart. Um, I'm pretty sure you can. But I'm going to use this white, and, then, and I'm kind of using a light hand here, and I'm doing sort of a dry brush technique. I don't want the wood to be completely covered up because my little inspiration piece, which is the big snowflake that goes in the middle, it has some distressing and some, some of the same look as what we're doing here on the snowflake. And I just really wanted everything to be cohesive and look similar. So I'll show you how that other snowflake looks. And you can see that they look better like that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing with each of the snowflakes so that they can all be drying at the same time. This chalk paint is convenient. It dries super fast. There's the Grinch with his hat on. Oh, he needs a little bit of hot glue to fix him, but she's gonna work on that. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, so now we need to put that snowflake on the tree. So I'm going to use a pipe cleaner. I'm just going to peel up the little section here because that tape is repositionable. You can move it around. It's sticky, kind of thick, like those little slappy hands that kids like to play with. That's what the texture reminds me of. I'm going to put some hot glue down on that full-size pipe cleaner, and then I'm going to press my lights, switch back on there. And just hold it for a minute so that my glue will dry underneath and everything will stay together and not fall off because I'm going to be manipulating the snowflake to get it in this wreath and I don't want anything falling apart. So I'm just going through, trying to find a spot that is empty between my deco mesh. I don't want to squish any of my bundles down and distort the shape of my little swag. So rather than wrapping it around the center, I'm just going to go and wrap it around the little branches. This is going to give me an opening to be able to put my hand in there to turn the switch on and off. Because that's the important part, right? We need to be able to turn it on and off. Alrighty. So here are our snowflakes, and they are all dry now. I'm going to take these picks, and I just decided to cut them down shorter. Um, the bottom part of the pick, for some reason, didn't have much on it. I guess that's the way it is when it snows and sleets anyway, doesn't it? The top of the part is what gets the snow. But since we're doing this and we got snowflakes everywhere, I wanted to put lots of sparkly pieces around. So that's what I'm doing. I just cut them down smaller and I'm just going to be adding these throughout wherever they look good. I'm not worried about perfect symmetry here. Just want to get it where it feels right, where it looks right. How many of you actually craft that way? Do, do you go by how you feel or do you try to go by rules that other people give you? Because I'll tell you right now, if I went by all the rules that other people give me in crafting, I don't think I would have got as far as I have gotten. And I appreciate that uniqueness. It's God-given. And all of us have the ability to do something unique. And we should do that. Because that's the stuff that brings us the joy, you know. Brings us happiness. Gives us a smile when we see it in our home. When we come home and it's hanging on our door. It gives us that smile and that welcome home that we all appreciate and enjoy. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my biggest snowflakes and I'm gonna put those in there first. Just gonna place them here and there. I wanna be sure that they are touching something when I put the glue in there. You know, just poke it in there 
expect it to stay. You need to have it pressed against uh, some type of framework underneath or another ornament or the picks, you know, so that nothing falls out. I don't want my projects that I work so long and hard on to just, you know, fall apart. I want them to last a while. So you're going to see me just taking the different ones and just placing them here and there. And you can actually give it a little dimension by gluing it right to the back of that star that's already there. You can see here. Just sandwich it between the deco mesh and the bottom of that snowflake. And honestly, if you don't have lights, which I feel like you can find them anywhere right now, especially during holiday time, but if you don't have lights, you don't even have to put them on your swag. This, to me, is gorgeous as it is. It's just really not necessary, but it honestly is the icing on the cake. It, it gives such a warm and pretty glow. And you see how nice it looks with a variety of sizes and shapes? I just love it. Okay, so here are the little pieces that look like um, all the leaves have fallen off and, and this is what's left in the wintertime. These little sticks. And they have the same little ice on them, so they need to be added. This is going to give it a little more of a rustic look, which you know I'm all about that rustic life. And it's going to give it a little more size. It's going to make it a little wider. And I like that. Plus, it's like a flyaway, you know? Gives you a little more interest. And I think, honestly, it really brings the piece together, having these additional pieces in here. And they all came off the same pick. There were pine cones as well, but I didn't feel like the pine cones were appropriate for this it would have just overwhelmed it and taken away probably from the snowflakes and I didn't want that to happen they need their moment so you can see you're just tucking them here and there and they're very lightweight so they'll stick to that mesh and not pull anything down you can do this with the little pitberry vines that you get at Dollar Tree or any other type of greenery. You know, you could, instead of doing the little sticks, you could use other frosted greenery that you like. Um, the little frosted eucalyptus is really pretty, and you can get that from Dollar Tree. You can use berries instead in these places. Whatever you want to use. But I really wanted to focus on, you know, the white and silver. I did a, a video uh, recently with a lot of gray and white, and I just loved it. And when I thought about this snowflake and I knew I wanted to make a swag, I thought these would be beautiful together. Really accent each other. So I'm just continuing to go around. And, you know, it's not important that they're the same size. Nature generally doesn't do things like that. So I'm just kind of following that rule. Just put them here and there. Just like God does it, you know? Here and there. Okay, so you remember the long piece at the tip of the tree? We're going to use it to hang the sign. And look when we turn the lights on. <gasps> oh my goodness, the magic. I love this. You could take more lights if you wanted to and go all the way through your swag. But this brings a lot of attention to that middle piece. And I'll...
here's my lantern. It had glass in it, but it was broken, and I took it all apart, got it from the thrift store, cleaned it up. You can see that it's about 20, 24 inches. I'm going to use a variety of picks, same types and colors of what we used in our centerpiece because, you know, we want it to all look similar. A lot of these pieces are just little bits and pieces that I've taken off of projects from last year and the year before, and I keep them. Now I'm going to make some picks. You've seen me do this before. You're just going to add in stuff to kind of beef it up. I'm going to make the top a little bit thicker than the bottom, just for my own purposes. I'm going to zip tie it in the middle, clip it off so that we have a nice little swag here. Typically with the swag you see that the top is going to be a little bit shorter than the bottom and the bottom is going to hang down more. You can certainly do this any way that you want to. You'll need a longer swag if your lantern is taller or you can make it shorter, whatever you like. But you see how I'm inter intertwining those petals? Now that looks like one big poinsettia, just like that. Sometimes you'll have enough room if you have thin enough wires that you could just push those in there and you don't even need any glue, which makes it perfect. But if you need some glue and you need to use additional zip ties, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use a black pipe cleaner and kind of weave it up in there so that I will have something to attach it to the top of my black lantern. This way you won't be able to necessarily see that once it's attached. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd love to see you there. More of this white ribbon and we're going to make a bow. Now this is a wired ribbon and it is picking up every little piece of stuff. That's the one bad thing about flocked pieces. They just make such a big mess. We're going to turn this fabric over and over on itself and we're going to have two loops on this end, two loops on this end, and then we're just going to cut it off. We'll make a separate tail so don't be concerned about that. This is about eight inches. Then I'm going to do the same thing, only make it just a hair smaller with this. Now the jute doesn't have any wire in it, or not the jute, this burlap, it doesn't have any wire in it, but because we're making it so short, it's going to stand out nicely on its own, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. We're going to fold this over and over on itself as well, till there are two loops on each side, just the way we did the other one, and cut it off. So you can see here where your center is going to be, just like that put your little loose piece on the bottom. We're going to fold over the white piece to give us a line where we need to cut. We're going to cut through the wire and just into the fabric. Okay. Now we're not going to need to do that with, with that burlap because the burlap has already got little notches in the side. It's naturally notched. Take a zip tie, flip it over, and then cinch it up on the back. You can pleat this in your hand if you want. I'll show y'all how to do that at some point. Um, but for now, I just wanted to go ahead and get this little bow done and make it a little bit wider on the top than it is on the bottom. But you can move that around, but I'll show you that at another time. So be sure that you cinch it up where the little clamp thing is on the, the back or the bottom so that you don't see it. Start on the bottom and pull out your little loops. Pull them out and away from each other and you can kind of twist it side to side a little bit and that'll help it stand out. And then go up to your top loop and you can do the same thing there. You can tuck that little extra piece in or you can cut it off. And that's all it is to making that bow. Very simple, very simple. Now for the tails I'm just going to use a long piece of that burlap which already has a little curl in it. I'm going to fray the ends a bit because I want a straight edge here. I'm going to fray just pulling those little pieces off one at a time and then I'm going to make a straight little edge and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just pull some of those little pieces loose and you have a little straight edge just like that. You can just lay that down. It's going to be several inches longer than the white one, and that is fine. We'll pinch that up in the middle, 
and this is what's going to be our tails. I'm taking a piece of jute that I keep on my work table and I'm going to tie a few knots in the back so that our tails are attached firmly and nothing comes loose when we fluff. That's simple enough. Leave those ends long because you're going to need to use those pieces to tie onto your little swag piece. I'm just cutting these at a slant. These are actually not going to hang down. I've decided to use these uh, as part of the bow to make it look a little bit bigger and you'll see how we do that once it's attached to the lantern. But for now go ahead and tie your bow on and then you can cut it off. You can see my lantern has a door and we are on the front. Be sure that you are working to the front of your lantern. I'm going to lift up this swag. You can bend that top a little bit so that it will sit right there on the neck and then wrap those pieces of pipe cleaner around to secure them down. Now is the time you can look in there and cut off any little things that don't belong, little stems and such, and go ahead and fill in the spots that need a little extra. So I had some extra snowy pine cones and I'm just going to add those here and there to fill it out. Go ahead and grab those pieces of fern and tuck them in where they are needed and they'll make a very pretty swag piece. Now I know that this is not long enough for this lantern. I can clearly see that. I'm going to fix it. So you can see I'm just taking the white tails here and just rolling them under with my fingers. And because they're wired, they're going to stay up there pretty nicely. It's just going to make like a little, a little curl. Same thing with that piece of jute on the top. Just made a little curl up there and it looks really cute. Now we're going to use these two pieces, little snowy limbs, and I'm going to be putting one at the top, and then I'm going to put one at the bottom, and that's going to help elongate our piece. So don't panic. You can always add a little something to it. Now we have to fill in the lantern. So I'm going to take a piece of this fabric, uh, I think it's an automotive section at Dollar Tree, and excuse my head, I'm just going to fold it and tuck it in there to make a snowy bottom. And then I'm going to use a pick and a couple of battery operated candles to light it. And okay, we're going to use some flat white paint, spray paint. We're going to use two pumpkins that were, they're very sad looking. We're going to take the hardware off the pumpkins and we're going to repurpose these. I'm going to sand off that glitter and then you have to be sure that you wipe this down because if you don't, then when you get ready to paint it, it's going to smear black dust all into your paint and you will have a very nasty, dirty looking finish. So I'm just, I just put a little bit of alcohol spray on a paper towel and I'm just wiping it off really well. Then I'm going to put some dowels down on the inside. It's just foam on the inside. Spray paint. Now this is two coats and it still looks kind of gnarly, but I'm going to be putting some more paint on it so it's not a problem. I'm going to use a utility knife to cut this part of my pumpkin so that when I flip it over and put the other pumpkin on top of it, it will sit flat rather than being like having a big gap in it. It's just going to be more secure if we do it that way and it's going to look better, I think. Now I know plenty of people say a snowman has three parts. He has a bottom which is the biggest, the center that's a little bit smaller and then a head on the top. Well my snowman does not have that. I live in the south and we're lucky if we get one section. I have a short squatty little snowman but I think he's precious in the end. So to attach these pieces I'm just going to use dowel rods and some hot glue. I think this is the best. I laid it down side by side to make sure that I got it right where it needed to be and made a mark on the other pumpkin because I had to choose what I wanted to be the top and what I wanted to be the bottom. 
So there, just like that. Now I know exactly where my center is going to be. I hot glued a second stick in there, and now it's ready to be painted with my chalk paint. So I'm just using some of my Waverly White chalk paint, and I'm going over the entire thing. Once it's dry, you can go over it with some adhesive spray and some glitter if you would like that, or some fake snow, or whatever you want to use for this. I like the matte look, and I decided to leave it that way because he's going to have some sparkle anyhow. I'm putting some glue in those holes for where the sticks go, and then some all around that area. Try not to get it out where the curve starts because I don't want all that messy glue to be showing. So I'm going to put it back down on those sticks, hold it there, let it dry, and then you can see it sits very nicely and flush. Alright, so I'm taking a variety of picks here. Again, I'm trying to use some of the pieces I already had from my other pieces, and then I have some garland and pit berries, and a little thrifted, I think it's a boxwood wreath, also my white paint, and I have this little ornament. Plus I have some, uh, a ribbon that's got jingle bells on it too, so. I thought these pieces would be good arms. So I've just got him balanced here, holding him still with some paint bottles, and I'm going to use these branches for arms. Push them in there, trying to get it kind of even. And I think that looks pretty good. And then once his arms are in, it makes it a lot easier to work on him. Okay, so yeah, I think I like them. I'm just going to go ahead and push them all the way down and keep them there. I have those other little willow branches, but I don't think they would show up very nicely. It almost looks like he's a snow angel, doesn't it? Almost looks like wings. Okay. Now, you can use a little wreath like this if you have it. He's not going to have a hat. He's going to have a little wreath on his head because I think he's so cute. And this kind of makes him look a little more angelic as well. But he needs some snow, so I'm going to take that white chalk paint and a chippy brush and just dab it all over the top on the inside and the outside. I'm not looking for a complete coverage here. This is just to look like the snow fell on it, like the rest of the things that we're using. Look at this gorgeous ribbon I got at the thrift store. It's like a burlap ribbon, and it has rusty jingle bells. It's just perfect. Love it. I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom piece and a little bit in between to hold his little scarf and then trim up the little piece here and there. And it makes a great little scarf. Mm hmm. What do you think? So far, so good. He's going to look so much better. Okay, so I'm going to cut off one of these bells because I know that I want that ornament to go in that spot. I'm going to piece of that, put a piece of that willow branch right there, and I'm going to add my bell back, just kind of to the side a little bit, where you can still see that it is a bell. And I think that's cute. I'm going to attach it down with some hot glue, and it does stick very nicely to the burlap. I'm just trying to center it somewhat. It doesn't have to be perfect. This garland was a pain in the behind. So I would really recommend that you just get some of that scatter that you can get at Dollar Tree that's got all that different stuff in it. It's going to be a lot easier for you. Then I'm going to take some of the pit berry after I have glued these pine cones down and just kind of wind it around and around until I get as much coverage as I like. I'm not trying to get it super tight. I like that it's standing up in some places and poking out, my little berries are poking out, and I'm totally fine with that. And this is how it looks. Cute. I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of it and just put it right down on his little head. You got to hold it there for a minute to make sure that it dries. I really like the coverage of that chalk paint on there. Made a big difference. Alright, so I'm just going to add a pine cone, and I'm going to take some of these willow branches that I cut down, and I'm just twisting them together. And I'll make two of these little bundles and put them on either side. I know you can't see very good from here, so I'm just going to talk you through it. See there? Just going to tuck it in on that side. We're going to do the same thing with another little bunch on the other side. 
just like that. A little hot glue is going to help you hold those in place. I'm going to cut another one of these in half. And put those right in there also. And then I have a couple of these little twisted pieces of the pit berry that I, you know, wrapped around a pencil. You've seen that before. I'm going to do that on both sides and add another pine cone on the other side of that little rusty bell. I have a snowy boxwood pick. It matches his crown, so I think that it would be look, look pretty nice down here on his little badge, his Merry Christmas sign that he is wearing. Now we're going to pick eyes. We have a variety of beads and pieces that we can use. I think the little wood pieces will work. And wouldn't it be precious if he had a little pine cone nose? Perfect. Look at that. That is perfect. So we're just going to glue everything in place. And this is our little snow person. Isn't he sweet? Or our little snow angel. to start off with this Christmas tree that actually I used as a Halloween tree. It's two of them combined. I got those from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut off the zip ties that are on there and I have three holding those trees together. I find these flat pliers get the job done really well. They can get down into places, get really close to the surface to cut those off. So I'm going to take the two trees apart and in all the places where I have pieces of glitter and little remnants from the table scatter from before, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. You'll never know once we get working on this little swag. I'm going to leave those flat on one side and then pull everything up and to the sides. So if you wanted to do a teardrop swag, you would layer them this way, but we are going to do the swag that has greenery on both sides. Just going to trim those up so they're even, and we have to bind them in the middle. So we're going to take zip ties and connect here and here, and then you're going to clip off the extra. Okay, after we have that the way we want it, we're going to take this yard sign from Dollar Tree and we're going to take the, the sign stand off the back or the pick off the back. They come off fairly easily. Then we're going to start taking the branches. These are from some picks from Dollar Tree from last year. Some of these pieces are longer than the other ones. And I'm going to use my longest pieces in the center. Then I'm going to place some shorter branches next to those, trying to keep that shape there. You can push those back and pull some of the white branches out to give it a more snowy look. I'm just going to keep doing that until you get it looking the way that you want to. Now, here is an option for you. If you would like to use some ribbon, you can cut some ribbon to make some little tails to put wherever you want in your swag. I always dovetail the ends. This is wired ribbon, and both of these came from Dollar General. And they were $1 and $2, I believe. 
So just pinch them in the middle, then you can take a piece of pipe cleaner or a piece of string right in the center and just tie it, just a double knot, nothing fancy there. But for me, I'm going to put those to the side because I think I'm gonna go with something else. Now these berries came off the same pick as the pine and I'm just gonna pull those apart and start placing those in as well. I'm gonna use this floral foam block to put in the center. I'm gonna start off with some hot glue and press it down. Then I'm gonna take this floral tape and wrap it around. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to secure this, but this will work until the glue dries. Little more security here with those pipe cleaners. I'm gonna add some hot glue and a pipe cleaner and a little piece of scrap paper on there so that we can attach this to the block. Those foam blocks will sometimes shed and your items will fall straight off of it. So you need to secure it a little bit better and this way it wraps all the way around the base of that swag. Now I'm just extending out the form by pulling those white branches upward and I'm going to add some picks that I have cut down to make them a little bit shorter to go on the top. And you can do the same thing with the berries here. Then I go in the bottom and add a few pieces there. I'm just poking those right into that floral foam. And again, you want to put some toward the back, some a little more toward the front, and kind of incorporate them into that white. It gives it some depth. Put them down where you need to. I think he's looking cute. Okay, so if you want to add ribbon, this is how you would do it. And you would want to do it on both sides. And I have decided to make a bow to go underneath my snowman's head to look a little bit like maybe like a bow tie or a scarf, something like that. It's the black and white, looks really good. It's kind of winter wonderland, kind of woodsy. I'm just going to tie that right in the middle with some jute twine. I used one piece of ribbon to do that. No, it wasn't easy to see me tie it. I just made a loop and then pushed it up against itself and that's where I got the tails. I'm going to fold the ends under about a quarter of an inch and I want to make a little pom-pom fringe to go on there. So this is almost what's left of what I had from Goodwill. Some fringe I've had for a long time. And I'm gonna add this on the back of that ribbon so that you don't see that white cording on the top. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And then once you press that down, just be sure you don't have anything extending the edges because you want it to look nice and finished. So I'm just folding that in a little bit so it's not frayed looking. I'm going to add some glue to the string and a little piece of paper there to hold it in place. Trim it down flip it over and then fix my bow because I had it backwards. I wanted to do a little bit extra here on his hat and I had some holly picks left over from Dollar Tree that I have been using a little bit at a time. I'm just going to place those down on top of the original areas on his hat. And then I've pulled three berries off of the little berry picks. Careful not to burn yourself here. 
I looked high and low and they did not have any of these picks at my store this year. But these were very nice picks. They were on a long stem. So if you had any left from last year, this is a great project to use this for, I think. I'm just taking this little white marker. I don't think there's anything special about it. It doesn't even have a label on it. And I'm just going over the edges to kind of give it a, a little frosted look. Dollar Tree does make the holly picks that have the like a cream colored edge around the leaves. So you could certainly use that if you wanted, but I like the green better for this project. Then I'm going to take a raffia bow that came off of something else I've done and just glue that right in the center to give it a little, little more rustic vibe. And I think one more holly leaf and berry right here will do the trick. So I chose this little polar bear from Dollar Tree and there are several different types that you can choose from. They're itty bitty, just tiny little things. Some snowflakes from Dollar Tree. These I've had in my stash for a while. Some of these snowy willow picks also from Dollar Tree. Some cedar picks. And then these are two little pieces of scraps that I had. So we're going to start off with this beautiful little white planter. And I did not check mine when I got it out of the box, and you can see there's a chip right there. So be sure that you check yours. I was just in a rush. You're gonna use some floral foam to put down on the inside. Just cut a piece that's relatively the right size, and then you can just use a metal ruler or a knife to carefully remove and make it flat right on the top. Just like that, very easy. This foam is kind of messy, so you're gonna to have to be sure you wipe this all back off. Clean off your surface before you go forward or it will stick on everything. So I'm just gonna start with this snowy pick and put it down in here. I'm trying to get an idea of how big I want this to be and I think that that overwhelms the size of that little planter. So you can pull it apart, bunch it together. Um, you can use some floral wire if you want to connect it, but I think that doing it this way is gonna give me the right height that I'm looking for. I'm just gonna cut apart a few of those little branches there very easy to alter these pieces you just use your wire cutters or your scissors and then cut those pieces off you want to be sure that you're going to have some variety of height it's just more interesting instead of everything being exactly the same matchy matchy um, it's not like that in nature you know so we don't want this to look landscaped in other words we want this to look uh, woodsy rustic and you know kind of woodland that's how I like to do it but you can always do it the way you like. Now you wanna be sure that you cover up that foam on the inside so it just looks better that way. And if you use full enough pieces, you can certainly cover that up. I just cut a piece down and then put it right there and it also helps kind of disguise that chip. Same goes with these gorgeous glittery picks. Um, you will see in my crafting, I don't do much glitter, but I think that it is appropriate in the winter time and at Christmas time um, to use a little sparkle just like snow sparkles right okay so then we're gonna make a pick with these I don't want this to look flimsy so I'm gonna just layer these two together and cut your little strings off because these are actually um, sold as Christmas ornaments you can use the little clear ones that you can see up there in the right hand corner if you want whatever you want to use but I, I like the silver for this so I'm just gonna use some um, hot glue and a pick that I got the, um, the cedar pick. I just cut that off the bottom and we're gonna use that as a pick because it's glittery so it's gonna match perfectly. Add some hot glue on here. Carefully protect your fingers. If there's even a slight chance you might get glue on yourself, these glue guns get super hot. Okay, so we're gonna add some more here and just kinda sandwich this in here almost like making a cookie pop 
glue that down and if you feel like you need a little more glue between the other pieces that are sticking out you can go ahead and do that too but you have to be very careful because um, your exposure to getting glue all over you is definitely there when you start getting micromanagey on your snowflake. Just pressing it together to make sure the glue is sticking to all three of those surfaces and I'm gonna see where I want it to go in my arrangement. I know that I want it to be sort of in the middle and I'm, I'm trying to show this. We're going to start off with this wagon wheel wreath, which was originally from Dollar General several years ago. And I took all the picks off so I could use it again. I've got new picks, and I've got these little metal trees, um, <laughs> houses rather, from Dollar Tree. And they come in three different colors, so you can use whatever you like, but I like the, the metal for this wreath. Cut your picks apart because we're going to make new picks got two little picks that came from Dollar Tree with a couple little things on it and I'm gonna beef them up so I'm gonna add some white eucalyptus to it and I'm gonna add another greenery pick with some frost on it and I'm just gonna use these pipe cleaners to hold them together you can use floral wire you can use floral tape zip ties whatever you want to use I'm gonna make several of them that are somewhat similar and then I think I made two of those and then I'm gonna make a few more that are a little bit different and you'll see those as well okay see those and then we're gonna wrap these together a little bit different but it's all in the same theme everything is gonna match nicely together you can bend them out, they are mostly on wire, so just bend them, make them look how you want, nothing needs to lay flat, and then start placing them around where you think you might want them. I always do this first. I don't always leave it in the video, but I always lay them down first to decide what is most pleasing to my eye. And you know it's gonna be different for everybody. You know, everybody's gonna like something different, and that is fine. Your crafts and creations are yours. They bring you joy. No one can tell you that it's not right. You don't need approval, is what I'm saying. Be confident. Do it with joy in your heart and be confident. Okay, so I'm just using zip ties here, but you can use, you've seen me use floral wire to do this too. You could certainly use hot glue if you wanted because this is just like a MDF wheel. Whichever way you want to do it will work fine. I'm just kind of overlapping them where you can't see the stems from the previous one. You want it to be nice and full. Then move your picks around where they look nice. And then, so you can, we're alternating. So I had one of the thinner picks, then one of the thicker ones with the pine cones, then a thinner one. Then we're going to do the thicker pick with a pine cone in it, just like that. So I am asking that if you enjoy my videos, if you're already a viewer, I would love for you to subscribe and join this family. There's my son's hands. He's all into it too. He's putting the winter ma magic in here. But I would love to have you. I really would love to have you. We have so much fun. I'm always in the comment section responding, you know, answering questions and just talking. I love to talk to y'all. I love to get your input. And so many people leave tips which is great because it helps us all. So be sure you read the comment section, you know, if you're a subscriber or if you're a viewer who is considering subscribing. Okay, so now it's time to put the pieces down. And I'm gonna do it just like this. You can put your houses on here any way you want to, but I'm trying to get mine centered in an area where the back is open so that I can put my little flickering flameless candles inside. So I'm trying to leave a space in there where I can get those pieces back on the inside. 
So just like this, I'm gluing it down. And don't worry if you make a mess, you know, just put something underneath your surface. Cause sometimes, you know, you put glue where it doesn't need to be and it's dripping on the table. It's okay. It's just crafting. It's supposed to get a little messy, right? So press them on down there and then add in your pieces of greenery in the additional spots that you want them. You're not going to see the end of this clip either because for some reason it disappeared on me. But uh, definitely, definitely stay tuned to the end because you will see what it looks like all together. I'm just adding in some more greenery and then I'm going to add some of those little Christmas trees just like this around the houses. 